comes to heating your home, infrared panel heaters seem to be the hot new thing. They heat you and the objects in the room instead of the air, which means that it should give a much cosier feeling. It should be like sitting in the sun. Should we see if that's really the case or if it's just a lot of hot air? Everyone wants to heat their home as cheaply as possible. Soon after we moved into this place, we got rid of the gas boiler and we got a heat pump, these air conditioning units in all the main rooms. And this has been fantastic. It's really cheap to run. However, I've also heard about infrared heating and I know nothing about infrared heating at all, but a company called Mirrorstone got in contact with me and said, would I like to try one? So of course I said, yes, and here it is. So in this box, there is an infrared heating panel. So let's open this box and see what it's all about. Let me tell you about my dog. She's blind, she's deaf, she's arthritic, she's senile. She's also the most wonderful dog on earth, we love her. But she started doing this crazy thing that if we leave the house, it doesn't have to be for that long, but if we leave the house with her alone, she destroys stuff. She rips open any cardboard boxes. She ripped open loads of boxes from Amazon the other day. And sadly, she did exactly the same with this. So my dog has already helped me get into this box. So I'll open the rest of this box using conventional methods. Scissors. Inside this box, we have one panel. This is a 700 watt panel. When they asked me which one I wanted, I said, well, I really want the biggest one I can possibly get uh, that's freestanding. I'll go into a bit more detail later, but I didn't want one that I had to get an electrician out to hang on a wall or anything like that, or ceiling. So I've gone for a freestanding one. It also means that we can take it with us when we go to the next house. One freestanding panel. Here we have the legs or the feet, whatever we want to call it. If we open this. You'll see here, there's a piece of paper here with all the mounting instructions on there and some areas there that you can mark on the wall or the ceiling if you're going to put it on the ceiling. There's a manual, of course. Screws and wall plugs if you're going to mount it somewhere. A remote control, which needs two AAA batteries. And you'll see on this end, we've got a normal plug, of course. Okay, well, first of all, let's install the feet. I'll get rid of the remaining cellophane that my dog didn't rip apart herself. So installing the feet, it's very simple. You've just got two of these and the panel just fits in there. So these can actually just be tightened up with your fingers. All these really seem to do is just hold it in place. They don't go all the way in. Batteries aren't included, so you've got to get those yourself. This is the remote control that you get with this next gen unit. They don't all have this. Um, some of the panels have a smaller remote and also have Wi-Fi access. Um, this one doesn't. So if you wanted to attach this panel to the wall, you can do so using these bars here that are already attached to it. You can also put it on the ceiling, but you've got to get a suspension kit if you're going to do that. You can't just attach it directly to the ceiling. I think that's probably because it needs a little bit of gap here for airflow. So um, bear that in mind if you're ordering one. Okay, let's plug it in. So instead of plugging it directly into the mains, I'm going to plug it into the battery because that way we'll see how much power it uses. Now, because I've got the heating on, actually the room is not that cold, but I'll do some more tests with it tomorrow. Can you hear my dog walking around? I let her out because she was scratching at the door. I have to try and talk to the camera while the dog is just standing still staring at the front door. So obviously the heating has been on all day. So actually it's not that cold in here. So I'll do some more tests tomorrow. So I'll turn on the remote. And at the moment the room is 21 and it says it's set to 21. So if I put this up, now the battery has started wearing. It's at the moment drawing about 600 watts. I'll just wait for her to walk off. Sometimes I really wish we got carpet and then she'll come back again in a minute. She's almost like a zoo animal. She's just walking around aimlessly because the girls are not in and she gets a little bit nervous. So as I'm sat here right now, I'm getting a really nice warm feeling on me. One of these freestanding panels like this, I think would work really well if you've got like 
maybe a small office or something, or just a small room that you want to be heated up. It's, it's so directional, it feels so directional. If I walk past there, then I don't feel any heat, and I obviously walk past the panel and I get heat. So in kind of small rooms, I think this would work really well. This is a very big room. I said very big. This is a pretty big room. And quite whether this would be sufficient to heat, well, it certainly wouldn't heat up the whole room, but you would have to think quite carefully about positioning. If you decided to go this route for your heating, then um, I think probably the ceiling makes the most sense. Also the advantage with the ceiling, of course, is that it means that you can put pictures on the wall and whatever, and it frees up your space a little bit. But um, that's just something to have a think about. For us, because we didn't want any electricians involved and we didn't go, want to go through all the hassle of drilling holes in the wall because we're selling the house, so that's why I've gone for this freestanding one. Now, one of the other nice things about this, compared to like conventional radiators, of course, is that these are much cleaner. It, easier to clean for a start, but also conventional radiators, especially if they've not been used for a while, uh, you get dust particles coming up from the back. And in fact, all you've got to do is do, 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 do like that at the back of a radiator and you see all this dust flying up. We went for just a normal plain white one. You can choose your own custom picture or you can get one of the prints that they provide. You can't then change it afterwards. You have to get it at the same time as you get the panel. You can also get mirrored ones as well. So if you wanted a mirror in your hallway or something like that, that doubles up as a heater, then actually that's quite cool, isn't it? I'm gonna turn it off for now and I'm gonna try it tomorrow morning when it's pretty cold and I'm gonna see what that's like. Okay, I've not turned the heating on in this room today, so it's relatively cold. It's 18.1 degrees. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the heater and I'm gonna come back in like an hour or so and to see how it heats the room. Now this isn't ideal, this isn't an ideal room for this particular heater, really. This being a freestanding one is more directional, it's like just for heating you and not the whole room. You would want one higher up, obviously, to heat the room properly. So this isn't a brilliant test, but it's, it's all I can do without drilling holes in the wall. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on. What we're also going to do is we're going to check out how it looks on here. This is a very cool little thing, it's a FLIR. F-L-I-R, FLIR, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, FLIR Pro, I think it is. Um, it's like an infrared um, device, infrared camera. And this will tell us how hot everything is in the room. So looking at it at the moment, I can see, just moving this around, the panel temperature is 17.5, because it's not been turned on, of course. And you can see little other areas like the home pod over there is lighting up. Um, that's like 22 degrees or something like that. The air conditioning unit is not actually turned on, but it is still at 21 degrees because it's, I guess it's on in other rooms. So I guess it's got gas circulating around the pipes and everything. So we'll turn on the heater to 21 degrees and we'll come back in an hour and we'll see how it's heated the room, if it's heated the room at all. As you can see from the infrared camera, the, the moment you turn it on, it starts up and it gets quite warm, the actual panel. It goes up to, it goes from 85 degrees to 95 degrees, the surface temperature. So obviously that is quite warm. Um, so, you know, just be aware of that if you've got young kids or pets. So these are really cheap to run. Our daytime electricity cost is 31.21 pence per kilowatt hour. And this is a 700 watt panel. That means you're looking at about 22 pence an hour to run, which is pretty good, really. Certainly far better than it would be if you had like a, an electric fire or something like that. 700 watts is the maximum you get for the freestanding ones, but it goes up to 1200 watts if you wanted one that's ceiling mounted or wall mounted. And this model is about 250 pounds. They also have versions that have Wi-Fi built into them. And um, you can then use an app, which is pretty good for um, controlling the, obviously controlling the temperature or setting a timer. With this one, the remote control does all that kind of stuff. So you can set a timer on the remote if you want it to come on in the morning and whatever. Now, while I'm sat here right next to it, I should probably mention the health benefits, but I was reading about the health benefits and there are loads of things that say infrared is good for you. And of course, if you do stay in the sun a little bit, 
then we all know that that is pretty good. Now, I'm not gonna go into the apparent health benefits because that's the kind of thing that gets you knocked off YouTube these days, but look into it yourself and do a bit of research. All I would say is this is giving off some kind of electromagnetic radiation. So, um, ah, wait, can you hear it? So usually it's perfectly silent, but just every so often you'll hear a sort of a humming, but it's so, so silent. I mean, it's, it's really good. Now, for some reason, I'm really susceptible to headaches sitting next to things like this, and I don't know why. If you've ever seen Better Call Saul, you'll know that Saul Goodman's brother has a kind of a weird thing where he freaks out about any kind of electromagnetic things. Um, I'm not that bad, but I'm just, I'm conscious of it here and getting, I get a bit headachey. I imagine if you're walking around and um, whatever, and it's heating the room, then you wouldn't have that. And it's just because I'm sat so close. So just to go back to the differences between each kind of heat source, our heat pump, our air conditioning units, blows out hot air in exactly the same way as it would do if you're in a car. And that means you do get this burst of hot air filling the room. And of course, if it oscillates and that fills it quite quickly, but the moment you turn it off, I find it feel, it's a bit more transitional. The, the heat kind of starts to drop quite quickly. And as colder air mixes, then it feels, I would say a little bit less cozy. So it's a very good way of filling the room with hot air pretty quickly, but it doesn't feel as cozy. Traditional radiators, in my opinion, feel a little bit cozier, for instance, than the sort of air conditioning blowing hot air. Um, this should feel, in theory, should feel the coziest, but I think you've probably got to have it on for a long time. It's, it isn't radiating heat, it's radiating infrared radiation. That radiation gets absorbed by any objects that are nearby. So I'm getting hot while I'm sat here and it feels like the sun shining on me. It's quite pleasant, actually, it's really pleasant heat. And objects will absorb this heat so it's not affected by air at all. And in fact, it even says on some websites I was looking at that if you have got a drafty room, then these are really good because the, they're not affected by the, hot, the, the cold air coming in. And what it should do in theory is this should be heating things like it should be heating this chair I've got here and it should be heating the table and the little poof thing and the carpet and the, hopefully if it reaches the sofa as well, and all of this will absorb that heat and then it will slowly release the heat. So it should give a very cozy warmth to the room. But as I've said before, that is not the best position for it. It is impressively thin. So that's 22 millimeters. It's also impressively light. It's 5.5 kilograms. So um, it's very, very easy really to move it from one room to the other. It doesn't take very much effort at all. Um, this particular one is 600 mil height and 1200 millimeters width. It's made of aluminium or aluminum if you're watching this in America. So of course that makes it very light and recyclable as well, which is obviously a good thing. So in my experience, this is far, far lighter and easier to move than for instance, like um, a radiator, like an oil field radiator or something like that. And of course it's much cheaper to run. So. Um, if you were to get like a fan heater or something like that, then what's that like two kilowatts, three kilowatts or something? And this is just 700 watts. It's IP54 rated, which means it's fine for splashes of water, but don't go putting any kind of washing on it or, or something and then expecting it to dry. Um, that wouldn't be a good thing. In fact, there's even a little symbol here that says don't hang your washing. Although I thought it was a man reading an instruction manual when I first saw that. <laughs> Obviously everyone's space is different. Our lounge is pretty big, really. And we were thinking, well, you know, if we do get one of these infrared panels, where do we put it? We were thinking we could replace this picture. We got this picture ages ago. Um, it's lots of wine aromas, by the way. Um, so we're thinking we could put it there, actually, and maybe just get the same print and put it on the panel. So that was an option. But then we were thinking we, we sit down and eat here and maybe we don't want the heating just hitting the back of our head while we're eating there, so maybe that wasn't ideal. So then we we're thinking maybe we could put it on the ceiling. We have a pretty big area in the ceiling actually that we could put it, but I do think ceiling mounted is probably best. I imagine that fills the room much better. And since it is splash proof, you might find actually that the bathroom is one of the best places for these panels. Especially as if you get out of the shower and you get an immediate hit of heat, 
be quite nice, I think, actually. So yeah, bathroom would be a perfect place for this. We've actually got towel rails in our bathrooms and they're not the most economical things to run. So the ambient temperature has hardly changed at all while it's been on for the past hour. So perhaps if it's on all day, then maybe that'll make a difference. So the room temperature in here is a bit better insulated, really. The room temperature is 18.5. So I'm gonna turn it on. Also set to 21. And again, we'll test in an hour to see how much better this is. What this does have going for it is that, I mean, at the moment it's pointed towards the wall over there. So, and there's a bed here because it's a spare room. So all of this is gonna get heated. There's more stuff that can get heated up, which will in turn radiate heat. So if we start using the infrared camera, you'll see how it's heating the objects around here. And even the door handle is getting a little bit warmer because that's quite close and of course that's metal, so that's going to absorb the heat quite well. As I suspected, a small room like this makes much more sense with one of these panels. It works much better. While I'm facing the panel here, I can feel the heat. I can't so much when I turn this way and I'm using the computer, but again, that's just down to positioning more than anything else. As you can see from the remote there, it says 19.9 degrees. So that's the temperature of the room now in the space of an hour. So that's not bad actually. It does show that this is much more suited to a small room, at least this kind of freestanding panel that I've got here. So yes, smaller room seems to suit this much better. By the way, if you're interested, this is the FLIR 1 Pro, this little imaging camera at the bottom here. It just plugs in the bottom of your phone. You can get them for lightning connectors for the iPhone or you can get USB-C and it works really well. It's really cool. Not cheap. This was about £270, I think, this one. But it's very cool, especially if you've got loads of um, air coming in in your house and you want to find it, then it's a really good way of finding kind of cold zones and things like that and where you've got to um, insulate a little bit more. So really good. Anyway, sorry for hijacking the review. So what do I think of this Mirrorstone Next Gen IR panel heater? Well, I think it's really good in a smaller space, at least this one anyway, this freestanding one, works much, much better in a smaller space. In the case of our lounge, it's far too big an area to be effective, and I think it would need to be ceiling mounted, or I would need to have more wall mounted ones for it to work. Of course, the fact that you can actually buy these with a picture on them does make it quite convenient, so it means you could have them on the wall and no one would know that it was a heater necessarily. And I can see that it is quite effective in terms of heating objects. I mean, looking at the thermal imaging in my room here, you can see how everything is starting to get warmer and that in turn improves the ambient temperature. So yeah, I wasn't initially convinced, but the more I'm using it, the more I think it's pretty good. And I do think this freestanding one is probably pretty good if you are just wanting to heat up yourself, or if you're sat on the sofa and you just don't want to put on all the other heating, then it would be very cost effective because it's extremely cheap to run. You've got to put a little bit of thought into its positioning. So um, bear that in mind. But overall, I think it's pretty good. Um, if you are interested in getting one of these, then go to the website below. And if you have any questions, ask me. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please press the subscribe button and the bell icon to be notified of other videos and hit that like button while you're at it. And I'll be back very soon, hopefully looking a little less ridiculous than this. Cheers.